Greetings, 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 royal family. I'm back. So this is episode 19 of Sisters. Thanks for clicking on the video. Let's get straight into it. Okay. The episode opens with Maurice. We see that he gets assaulted by Alonzo and basically left for dead. So later on, we will revisit him being discovered. So we don't know if Maurice is alive and well, what's going to happen. We move on to see Sabrina. She calls Danny and she tells her that Calvin was performing on stage, that Calvin's performing on stage at this, uh, at this gay club. And Danny is, she has her, you know, rodeo over. She has company. So she tells her to go back inside the club because they, um, Sabrina is outside of the club calling Danny. Anyway, so Danny tells her to go back inside the club and tip Calvin and Nichols. And, you know, it's funny that I find that these ladies choose to take Danny seriously whenever they see fit. Because Sabrina actually goes back into the club, walks up to the stage and throws coins at Calvin on stage in front of everyone. Now, is that supposed to be some sort of sign of disrespect? Let me know in the comments. I, I don't know. Is she supposed to be embarrassing him? Anyway, so Sabrina doesn't leave right away. She goes to the back of the club and she is listening to Calvin's speech. He's a, after he's done with his performance, he's addressing the crowd. And he says, you guys know my dad has been bringing me here for years. And then he, he basically says that his father has been in the hospital. So they are, it looks like Calvin is performing to raise money for his dad's uh, medical bills. And I'm just like, you know what? Give me a freaking break. Like enough with this guy already. Like seriously, this is just becoming a joke. It has been. Anyway, we move on to the police station. So down to the police station, Andy identifies Morris uh, as the man who assaulted her. So the police officer arrests Morris and he is pissed. Of course, uh, the wife client, she's pissed as well. Um, and I think she, she, what did, I forgot what she said to Danny, but Morris doesn't seem like he's going away right away. And you know what? I'm glad because he's interesting. Spice this up a little bit. So I'm looking forward to see uh, seeing what Morris is going to do to retaliate uh, for being arrested. Anywho, we move on to Danny, and she's expressing how um, hard it was for her to love herself. She's telling Rodeo this. So after Rodeo prepared this nice dinner, they're sitting down talking. Um, Danny doesn't believe anything that Rodeo says about her, and he's confused. You know, he's new to this whole dating thing. He doesn't get why she doesn't take any of his compliments seriously. So he ends up making her say that she's beautiful. So she actually utters the, the, the words. Now, it's obvious that she's scared of being hurt. But are we really supposed to believe that now she has all of this confidence in herself because a man is telling her that she should? I don't know. You guys know what Tyler gives. Let me know what you think. Anyway, we move on to see Andy, Karen, and Zach. They're riding in the car. They're leaving the uh, police station. They're on their way home. They're going to be dropping Andy off. And of course, Zach and Karen are arguing. So Zach ends up asking Andy what she thinks about him. And Karen is trying to kind of stop this conversation. But Zach really wants to know. So Andy tells him that he's immature. He does have a heart of gold and he's hardworking but he's not trying as much as he should and his mother coddled him too long she goes on to say that he picks fights with karen because her success intimidates him and he relies only on his looks now she's tell karen telling karen the same thing you know something similar and i said well 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 isn't andy quite the iyanla of this episode now i do hope they listen because it might be the last speech that she gives considering that the wife client uh and uh the lawyer are both on her behind so i hope they take heed anyway so karen she walks andy into her apartment and andy's telling karen look you either be with zach or you leave him alone stop wasting your time so karen is leaving and when she opens the door gary is standing behind door number one now i said to myself you know what this guy is something else every time a door opens it's either gary behind it or zach you know what I'm saying? So 
Gary says, you know, I can't, I can't deal with my wife anymore. So he's done. Now, did you guys catch when Karen started rolling her neck and she tried to jump in and tried to say something to Gary? How Andy, uh, 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 she shut her up and she basically checked her like, I got this. And then Karen was like, you sure? She's like, I'm sure. And she went on about her business. So it's okay for Andy to dip in your business. Um, but you can't dip in Andy's business anyway. So Gary comes in and he says that, you know, he's not going back to his wife and Andy asks him if he's hungry. She didn't even try to fight him or say anything. So it's obvious that Gary might not be going anywhere, but we shall see. All right. So we move on to Zach and Karen. They're riding in the car. They're on their way home. And, um, Zach says this, now this was funny. Zach says that Andy had a lot to say about him and their relationship, him and Karen's relationship, considering that she's sleeping with a married man. Now, I wholeheartedly agree. He didn't say anything wrong. I totally, totally agree. Now, Karen tells Zach, don't judge Andy. And I noticed that Karen, she doesn't like or tolerate any bad mouthing about her boo, Andy. Okay. But what Zach said is the truth. So, Zach and Karen, they end up breaking up again. She ends up kicking him out the car. So she's driving home. <clears throat> and there we go. They break up again. So we see Sabrina. They switch to a scene where we see Sabrina. She shows up to Danny's house to whine and pout about Calvin. Anyway, so on, on Karen's way home, she calls Aaron to come by her place. She didn't even have to ask him. You know, it was late at night and he just basically says, I'm on my way. So when they get back to the house, Aaron reveals that his kids are his stepchildren and they never really liked him. Now, I thought that was interesting. And I said, I want to know why those kids never liked him. Was he a drunken lunatic throughout his marriage? And he's trying to act like he's Mr. Perfect. I'm saved. Salvation is mine type deal. Why don't those children like him? <clears throat> interesting. So hopefully Tyler Perry will you know, dig into that instead of these repetitive plot lines in this darn uh, uh, season. Anyway, so in the middle of Karen telling him that, you know, he should seek professional help, grief counseling, he kisses her. And she doesn't want to be intimate with him because she feels like he's in too much pain right now and he definitely needs to get some help. And I agree. I think that Karen is smart uh, taking it real slow with him because number one, she did find out indirectly that he had a drinking problem. His ex-wife just, you know, offed herself. She's Karen is also going through post-traumatic stress. And it's like we're focused on Aaron's issues. I get it. It's the loss of his, of his ex-wife. But when he was in that uh, boardroom, he couldn't wait to divorce her, you know, calling her all types or whatever, whatever. I mean, it doesn't lessen the pain. But can we focus on Karen's well-being? She actually watched somebody take their life. Like, it happened right in front of her. Anyway, so he ends up laying his head on Karen's lap and cries himself to sleep. We move on to Sabrina. She's calling Maurice. She hasn't spoken to him all night. Calvin calls her. She's back home. Calvin calls her and asks her what she was doing at the club. He told her that she was out of line for what she did. Because that night was a special night for his father. What does Sabrina do? She blames Danny. And then he says to her, Calvin says to her, see, like, that's your problem. Like, you always need your friends to think for you. And I thought that that was funny because that was so stupid. Why would you blame Danny? Just apologize and get off the phone. So Sabrina, she starts with that pathetic begging. Calvin tells her again, he wants her to leave him the F alone. Like, just leave me the F alone. Even though he called her still, leave him the F alone. So Sabrina says that, you know, that's the part that hurts Calvin. That's the part that hurts. Child, he ends up hanging, he ends up hanging up right in her face. Good. Just end the conversation. Really? You're going to blame Danny? You, ugh, God, she's so pathetic. Like, we get it, Tyler. We get it. We get it. Sabrina's character is pathetic. We get it. You don't, you don't have to keep making it look worse. We move on to Andy. So we see Gary back in her bed sheets. So, you know, they, they're all smiles and she's smiling. Like she, again, like she doesn't have Morris, the angry lawyer on her ass and, and the uh, pissed wife client. So <clears throat> this should be interesting. So Gary is telling Andy 
exactly what she wants to hear about their future. And Gary's telling her, you know, baby, don't worry. You won't be disbarred. You know, I have a few cards up my sleeve. And I'm wondering, what cards you got up your sleeve? I didn't, I don't know Gary to have any pull. Something just ain't right with this Gary. I just, Andy, I think Andy's going to take a fall at the end of this season series, whatever, even if it comes back for a season two. We shall see. I'm hoping so. Suddenly there's a knock on the door. Gary pulls up his drawers and he comfortably walks through the living room. And I'm like, is that white client on the other side of the door? And are they going to set up Andy? Then I said, nah, probably the cops going to arrest Gary. And he opens the door <laughs> and there, there, the cops are standing saying, Hey, are you Gary? Whatever, whatever. You're under arrest for assault and attempted murder, attempted murder. So Andy, she comes running out and she's like, I'm his lawyer. I'm his lawyer. I'm like, Oh, why would you say that? And what are you going? You don't even know if you have a law license. Lord help her, help her bless her heart. So they whisk Gary away. And um, we, that's when we pan to see Danny real quick. She wakes up and rodeo is gone. I think she calls Sabrina, but who cares? Karen, uh, we see Aaron. He fell asleep in her lap. They didn't do anything. And I really wonder what's his deal. I hope we get to see more of some of the char the other characters stories um, because Every week now, it's starting to become repetitive, repetitive, you know, anyway. So as he was getting ready to leave, he's like, oh my gosh, how long was I sleep? You know, they slept together on the couch. Another innocent night, nothing happened. They're getting ready to walk to the door. And I said, I bet you any money, Zach is on the other side of that door. Opens the door, Zach is on the other side of the door. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is starting to become like real lazy. And I just feel like what else is there to for Karen and Zach to talk about. Like, there's nothing else for them to talk about. Like, oh my gosh, Karen already told him sh she doesn't want him. Like, why are they stringing each other along? Both of them are stringing each other along. Anyway, it's like, I want to break up with them and I ain't even in no relationship with neither one of them. Oh, Jesus. So we move on to Sabrina. She's going to work. She parks her car. She's, I think that's at the bank that she's, she's approaching. Anyway, she walks up. She sees that Maurice is on the ground. Now, how does she know that Mo that was Maurice, considering she didn't she never seen him in drag? But whatever, I guess we will, just for the sake of the episode ending, we will buy it. Because she didn't come that close on him before she realized it was Maurice. I don't know, whatever. Maybe, maybe I'm... I'm just used to Tyler Perry and his bad, you know, <laughs> his bad acting and directing. So, yeah, so she's screaming, you know, she is, this is the same spot where he was attacked by Alonzo. So she's screaming and that's where the episode ends. And I, you know, I really hope that they handle this topic specifically with Maurice delicately because it does deal with um, discrimination, assault, you know, battery abuse. So I just, I just really hope stereotypes also, cause you know, um, we, we gotta be careful by saying things like you can't read too much into stereotypes because stereotypes caused Maurice's character to get brutalized. You know what I mean? When Alonzo was saying, Oh, you making I'm tired of you making black men look bad. Like that's a stereotype, a negative stereotype that caused Alonzo to be, abusive aside from the fact that his character is a monster i'm just saying so i hope that tyler perry handles this with, with with maturity if not leave it alone if not leave it alone and i'm curious to see how he's going i have no expectation i'm keeping it real but i'm curious to see how he is going to handle this so royal family that concludes this review for episode 19 19 i think it is whatever be sure to like the video if you made it to the end. I appreciate it. If you enjoy the commentary, hit the thumbs up button. Um, get down in the comments. Of course, keep it respectful as always, or else your comment is just going to be deleted. So I will meet you down in the comments section, royal family. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And until next time.
Peace.